In the dark and dangerous world of illegal narcotics, there's little room for kindness, much less for friendship. So when a love story emerges from the drug game, there's no doubt that it comes as a shock to many. Omar Lormendez Pitalua, also known as El Pita, was a high-ranking member of the Los Zetas, who obeyed an order to abduct a woman but ended up falling in love with her in the process. With an occupation so full of risk and brutality, this twisted tale of love is so unexpected that it seems almost fictional. But Omar's life is eventful in more ways than one. Born on January 18, 1972, Omar Lormendez Pitalua was a Mexican army soldier that changed sides of the law in the late 90s and early 2000s. It was said that he served as a member of the elite special forces group, Grupo Arimóvil de Fuerza Especiales, also known as GAFE, until he deserted the military. Someone from the Gulf Cartel had gotten in touch with him in the late 1990s and promised him a higher income if he accepted to work for them. On November 26, 1999, he abandoned the military and joined the cartel after becoming enamored with what the underworld had to offer. His whereabouts and intentions were unknown until he suddenly appeared on the radar as a member of the Gulf Cartel. He was one of the first members of the notorious paramilitary group Las Zetas that operated under the Gulf Cartel in Tamaulipas, Mexico, that was run by cartel boss Osiel Cardenas Guillen. Known primarily as the Muscle, Omar was often tasked with carrying out security services, tax collection, and even executions. Being one of the founding members, he had the code name Z10, but most of his cartel comrades called him El Pita. On August 16, 2001, Pita Lua and a few team members were assigned to kidnap a woman named Angelica Lagunas Jaramillo. She had been running a contraband business in Matamoros, where she was selling and smuggling products without the permission of the cartel. Lagunas Jaramillo and her daughter were responsible for a covert operation selling booze, perfumes, cocaine, and marijuana without paying the cartel any fees, which they ran out of a restaurant. Agustin Hernandez Martinez, a former Gulf Cartel operator now protected by the codename Rafael, testified that the cartel sent roughly 18 Zetas gunmen to kidnap Lagunas Aramillo and her daughter from their Matamoros house. The night of the incident, Las Zetas visited her home and rang the doorbell. When Jaramillo opened the door, they quickly stormed in and grabbed her. She was dragged throughout the house by her hair and shoved into a car while the rest of the team searched the property for illicit goods. Laguna Saramillo was brought before the Gulf Cartel leader, Ocial Cardenas Guillen, at a secret location known as the Punto Oscar. They demanded that she turn over the drugs that she possessed, pay the cartel the outstanding taxes that she had been avoiding, and most importantly, work for them. In exchange for her life, Aramillo was asked to work for the cartel and purchase multiple properties for them under her name. Her cooperation was the only thing that would guarantee her survival. These properties were intended to serve as safe houses for the Gulf Cartel. She was informed by Cardenas Guillen that she wouldn't be subject to taxation for her drug business and that he would pay her $100 for each sale. However, she would first need to pay MXN $20,000 to each of the gunmen who raided her property. Both Jaramillo and her daughter accepted these terms and agreed to work under the Gulf Cartel. Just three months later, Jaramillo's relationship with Las Zetas had drastically changed for the better. Her restaurant had been becoming a hotspot among the Zetas members, and her drug operation had been growing in success with the help of her newfound co-workers. But the connection would only grow even stronger when she met Omar Lormendez Pitalua. The two were quick to fall in love, and El Pita asked Cardenas Guillen for 15 days off so he could plan his wedding. The two got married in 2002, and despite their rough first meeting, they were said to be madly in love. One of the other members, Arturo Guzman de Sena, also developed a romantic relationship with Laguna Saramillo's daughter, and the two of them had a child together. It seemed that even in the most unsuspecting of places, love could grow. During his time in Las Zetas, Pita Lua was part of many different assignments directed by Guzman de Sena. One of the most known assignments was the rescuing of a senior Zetas figure, Jose Ramon Davila Lopez, El Cholo. He was a member of the attack team of 25 Zetas militants that stormed the Tamaulipas State Police offices in Matamoros. AK-47s and AR-15s were carried by El Pita and his companions as they rushed the police stations, according to eyewitnesses, deploying former military tactics and tear gas in an attempt to free their fellow Zeta. Although they successfully extracted Davila Lopez, the team lost a few of their members during the brutal fight. Former Matamoros municipal police officers Jose Octavio Garza Garza and Jose Guadalupe Vida Triana, as well as Zeta's member Hugo Ponce Salazar, Z4, was detained. Early in 2003, Omar, who was stationed in Nuevo Laredo, Tamaulipas, was in charge of ousting the local territory's other gangs, Los Cachos, Los Texas, and Flores Soto, while rival gangsters Eloy Trevio Garca and Edgar Valdez Villarreal, La Barbie, 
opposed Elpida's expansionist goals and instructed their men to wage war against them. His main goal was to aid the Gulf Cartel and Los Zetas in their turf battle against the Sinaloa Cartel. The Sinaloa Cartel was the target of Pitalua's anti-cartel campaign, which also covered areas of Tamaulipas, Guerrero, Michoacán, Nuevo León, and Mexico City. In late 2003, Zetas members Flavio Mendez Santiago, El Amarillo, and El Pita were sent to Michoacán to battle the Milenio Cartel's opposition forces and make an effort to annex their territory. With his reputation only building, the local Los Zetas assigned Lord Mendes Pitalua as their leader. In addition to working against the Milenio Cartel, Omar was also in charge of building relationships with the law enforcement community to aid Los Zetas in obtaining information from agents opposed to them. His negotiation tactics and ability to say the right thing at the right time made him a great fit for the role. He received this intelligence through regional authorities in Michoacán and Guerrero, and he was also shielded from the local police. According to Siedo, one of Mexico's most known organized crime investigation agencies, Lormendez Pitalua reportedly collaborated closely with Julio Cesar Godoy Toscano, a former party of the Democratic Revolution PRD deputy in Michoacán. The two met with a mayoral candidate of Lázaro Cárdenas, Gustavo Torres Camacho, in 2004, where they discussed working together for mutual benefit. Federal officials believe Godoy used the $350,000 he allegedly got to help Torres Camacho win a political contest and to give the cartel information from the police regarding operations by the government against them. From 2004 to 2009, Carlos Sotelo Luviano, a businessman, served as Peter Lewis' primary clean front for his money laundering operations. According to reports, Sotelo oversaw 37 bank accounts that belonged to Lormendez Peter Lua and was employed by Los Zetas. He had many plastic surgeries to conceal his identity and bought assets for Albita under the names Francisco Chade Huerta and Jorge Lagunas Jaramillo. Together, they owned properties such as Pemex gas stations, homes, cars, and several commercial buildings in Morelos, Guerrero, and Mexico City. Because they saw it as a covert means to make economic investments, Los Zetas preferred to launder their money through gas stations. They had several Pemex employees and independent contractors working with them, and those who rejected their offers of employment suffered from extortion, kidnappings of family members, or even murder at the hands of the cartel. However, this operation would come to a halt when Sotelo was arrested in 2009, seizing all plans for further expansion. On September 21, 2005, Mexican authorities were given an anonymous tip revealing Lormendez Pitalua's whereabouts. Using the alias Martin Hinojosa Garca, he had been carrying a fake identification card from the Federal Investigation Agency, AFI. He was apprehended in Lazaro Cardenas, Michoacan. Pitalua was released in 2013, and he immediately returned to his old ways. He joined the Zetas Vieja Escuela, a branch of Los Zetas, continuing his organized crime activities, operating primarily out of Tamaulipas, Mexico. Lormendez Pitalua has since been recognized as a key figure in the old school Zetas faction. These are the guys who do things just as their name says. They are as brutal and notorious as the Zetas were back in the beginning of the 2000s. Since 2016, he has been charged with inciting drug-related violence in Tamaulipas, his wife Laguna Saramillo is currently serving a 20-year prison term for her involvement in narcotics trafficking. Her daughter Ana Bertha had a different fate. She was killed in Matamoros in 2007. The last anyone heard from Pitalua was February 26, 2016, when a note was found in Ciudad Victoria, Tomalipas, next to the dismembered corpse of an enemy mob member. The scribbled letter threatened local officials and residents and said, I'm coming after anyone who gets in my path or aids the fucking Northeast Cartel. This goes against all of the authorities, civilians and soldiers. Move the hell away. Although he was known most for his love story, Omar Lormendez Pitalua never hesitated to remind anyone of just how deadly he was. That's all for today. Thank you for watching Max Corrupt. And be sure to subscribe to learn more about the fascinating yet twisted world of cartels.